What's up, homies? Today, I'm going to explain one of the key algorithms in cryptography challenges and CTFs, which is the LLL algorithm. Um, nearly every CTF with mildly difficult crypto has some LLL challenge in there. So I'm just going to explain a very simplified version of LLL because it is very complex, but should this explanation should be enough to solve the most basic LLL type challenges. And then after that, I'm going to use it to solve one of the challenges from a recent CTF, um, Cyberspace CTF. The challenge is called Trendy Windy Trigonity. So, okay, let's go into what LLL is. Okay, so LLL stands for Lenstra Lenstra Low Vaz, and the full form is Lattice Basis Reduction Algorithm. So I'm going to explain what each word is. Um, firstly, Lenstra Lenstra Low Vaz are just the three people who invented the algorithm. But, okay, let's go into what, what a basis is. So this example will just be in, two dimension, in a two-dimensional plane. You can imagine that a basis would be constructed of these two vectors, B1 being 2, 1, and B2 being 1, 3. So what a basis is, is something that can basically create a lattice. So using these two vectors, a lattice is defined as the set of all vectors that can be expressed as a linear combination of these two vectors. So in this case, the lattice would be every single point that can be expressed as some integer times b1 plus another integer times b2. So for example, if you had 2 times b1 plus 0 times b2, which would just be b1 plus itself, then you get this point. And then if you wanted to do 1 times b1 plus 1 times b2, then you would get this point. So if you basically repeat this process, but with every possible set of two integers, you create the entire lattice, which is basically this sort of periodic pattern of points in the 2D plane. So this is basically the lattice. And the thing about lattices is they don't just have one basis. So we use this basis to create this lattice, but this lattice actually has many bases. And this is how I'm going to explain what reduction is, right? So in this basis, which is b1 equals 4, minus, 4 comma minus 3, and b2 being minus 3 comma 1, this basis still creates the same lattice, meaning that if you took an integer combination of these two basis vectors, you still get the same lattice. But what the reduction part of LLL does, basically, is from these two basis vectors, it finds a new set of basis vectors as such, which is a lot shorter than the original. So L one of the guarantees of LLL is that the new set of basis vectors is short. And short here just means, roughly, that the magnitude is kind of small. So you can see that the previous basis vectors were quite long, like magnitude-wise, and these ones are about as short as you can get. And LLL basically reduces the basis to these two vectors. And why is this important at all? Well, the thing is, you may notice that these two new basis vectors, C1 and C2, are actually points on the lattice. And what this implies is that C1 and C2 can be expressed as linear combinations of the original basis. So in this case, we have specifically C1 being minus B1, minus 2B2, and C2 being minus 1, minus B1, minus B2. So you can think of LLL as basically given two original B vectors B1 and B2 forming a basis, LLL will find a new basis, which is a lot shorter, which is essentially just finding new, a new set of vectors that is a linear combination of the original vectors that is guaranteed to be short. So you would use LLL in a case where you have a bunch of vectors and you need to find a linear combination of these vectors that you need to be short. Okay, so I'm going to explain how that can be used. So here's an example, right? Let's say we have the system of equations. m plus 2n equals 0. And minus 3m plus n minus 7 equals 0. So how can we use LLL to solve this? Now the first thing you can notice is that you probably don't even need LLL to solve this, right? There are many easier ways to solve this because there's two variables, two equations, it's linear. You can just use like Gaussian elimination or, or you can even just like do it in your head. 
but I'm just going to demonstrate how LL can be used here. So the first thing you do is you have to convert it into an equation of vectors. So in this case, we just, you know, line up the coefficients. So it would be m times 1, comma, minus 3, plus n times 2, comma, 1, plus 0, comma, minus 7, equals 0, comma, 0. And now you can kind of see how this is like the example I showed you just now, where 1, minus 3, 2, 1, these are all vectors in the 2D plane. And we're trying to find out what combination of each one will produce 0, comma, 0. But the thing about LLL is all of the vectors have to have a coefficient. So we're just going to put a coefficient here, p, and we know p has to be 1 for it to be satisfied because that was the constant in the equation. So later on when we get a solution from LLL, we just have to check that p is 1. And if it's not 1, it's an invalid solution. So you basically filter out the solutions until you get 1 where p equals 1. And remember that the basis is supposed to be short, so it's not like luck. P is, 1 is quite a small number, so statistically you're going to get a lot of vectors where it's 1. But essentially, the reason we can use LL here is because the right-hand side of the equation is 0, 0, which is a short vector, like the shortest vector you can get. So we can use LL here. So you take the two, three vectors in the left-hand side, and we're basically forming a basis with it. You apply LL, and you get this new basis. And if you can recall from earlier, since this basis is the basis of a, the same lattice as the original basis, we know that all of the vectors of the new basis are in fact a linear combination of the original vectors. So if you took a look at this first vector here, 0, 0, the algorithm is basically telling us 0, 0 is in fact a linear combination of 1 minus 3, 2, 1, and 0 minus 7, which would solve our solve our equation of course but but it's not very helpful right because the algorithm is just telling us that there exists a solution we don't know what m or n is we can even verify if p is actually one which we need for the solution so the way you actually extract the values of m n and p is by using a trick so you basically just append some dummy rows to each of the vectors in your equation so for example for the vector times m so 1 minus 3 you would add 1 0 0 for n you would add 0 1 0 and for p you would add 0 0 1 what this does is that on the right hand side your first two vectors sorry first two rows are unaffected they're still going to be zero but your final three rows will now indicate the values of m and and p now you may notice that this vector is no longer just zeros. But the thing about LLL is it doesn't guarantee that it doesn't guarantee finding like a zero vector. It just guarantees finding a short vector. And because this vector has two out of five zeros, it's still short enough to be found. So if you apply LLL on this new set and look at the second vector in the new basis, which we know is a linear combination, we can see the first two rows are zero. The last entry is one. And if you match it with the original right-hand side, 0, 0, M, N, P, P is 1. So we found a valid solution because the first two entries are 0. And now you just have to match it directly, and you get M equals minus 2 and N equals 1. Um, now I'm going to show you how this can be used to solve one of the challenges from the recent cyberspace ETF, trendy, windy, trigonity. trigonity. I believe the author was named NDR and has 40, had a 44 solve, so relatively easy, I guess, but it's not easy if you don't know LLL. It's basically know it or you don't, right? So let's look at the code, right? So you can read it yourself, but I'm going to go through it, the important part. So firstly, it's A and B are cast to the first half and the second half of the flag. So you basically split the flag in half and each half is 19 digits, sorry, 19 characters, and it's converted into an integer, so A and B. So we need to extract A and B, basically. Then they give us a value of X to be 0 0.758 something something something. Um, in the actual file, they give us 300 decimal places of this, of precision of this X, but I didn't include it here. And then the last thing is they calculate ENC, which is A times cosine X, plus b times sine x. And again, they give us 300 decimal places of this. So the challenge is basically, given these two equations, right? Given x and a cosine x plus b sine x, how can we extract a and b, which are basically components of the flag? 
So the reason why you may think to apply LLL here in the first place before we even start is that it's a linear combination, right? Because sure, there's a trigonometric function in here, but it really doesn't matter because we have the value of x. So what you can do is just calculate cosine x and sine x, which are here. Cosine x is 0 0.725 something something, sine x is 0 0.688 something something. And I can't guarantee that the precision of cosine x and sine x that's correct is the same because like we just applied a trigon trigonometric function, so it might have decreased in precision, but it doesn't really matter because that's all the information we have, right? And now you don't have to think about x anymore. You just have to think about cosine x and sine x. And to make this whole thing simpler, I'm just going to substitute the values of cosine x and sine x into the equation. Now, recall that, you know, the original right-hand side, which we assume to be more precise, has 300 decimal places. So the way you deal with this would basically be to multiply everything by 10 to the power of 30 so that the, the decimals on the left side become integers. Because in no... In no challenge in cryptography do you really want there to be decimals floating around like it's very rare like almost everything should be integers and so you multiply both sides by 10 to the power of 300 to convert them both sides to integers so we have these this equation now which is a times some integer plus b times some integer is roughly equal to some integer so to to make it llable we have to move the right side to the left because we need the right side to be short right so you move this constant over to the left, so it'll be minus that constant. And now we can initiate the step. So first we need to convert it into an equation of vectors. So the first thing we do is we put everything in a vector. So a times this number plus b times this number plus p times this number is roughly equal to zero. So again, you have to add p here because we can't just exclude a variable from LLL. We can't just force the row to be multiplied by 1 because there's no constant addition. So you force p to be there and you just recall that p has to be 1. So remember that when you check your solution, you have to make sure p is 1. And on the right-hand side, it's only approximately 0 because, again, we multiply by 10 to the power of 300. It's an approximate amount because we were literally given decimals. And that's okay for this because LLL just needs to find a short vector. So as long as the right-hand side, we need it to be short, then we can use LLL. So it doesn't have to be zero. So again, we do the identity trick by adding 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, so that we can extract the values of A, B, and P. And now we just apply LLL directly. So the thing is, uh, if we apply LLL here, the, the first vector of the resulting basis is this vector. And you can first the first thing you should do is filter out the vectors of the basis. So you filter them out for the last vector, the last entry being one, because we need p equals one, otherwise it's not even a valid representation of the equation. So here we have the last entry being one. And then you also see that the first entry isn't zero, right? Because you're supposed to compare it with the original equation. But again, it's an approximate thing, right? Because we have multiplied everything by 10 to the power of 300, um, this entry in the top is actually only around 45 digits. So it's really insignificant compared to that. And you don't even have to decide whether or not it's insignificant enough because you can just check whether you found the actual vector, right? So we have the values of A and B. So what we can do is we just take out the values of A and B from this vector and we just convert them to, into, to, to characters. And as you can see, it's the flag. So we basically just won by one very simple application of LLL. And the other thing I would like to mention is that for sage math, which is what most people use to carry out LLL, um, instead of using vectors, you combine all the vectors into one matrix, and then you do dot LLL. So that's how sage works. Um, but for sage, you have to transpose the matrix. So if you guys are going to try LLL challenges, remember that um, instead of thinking them as column vectors, you have to think of them as row vectors, because sage, it does a transposition first, and then does LLL. Uh, so the resulting matrix you also just take the rows as the basis so yeah um you win now and that's hopefully you guys can like better understand how LLL works but again this is like super simplified so but yeah hopefully it's enough to solve some basic LLL challenges